Craig here and in this video I'm going to be covering one of the features of the Jetpack by WordPress.com plugin. Now if you've never heard of this plugin basically it has a load of features which you're probably going to use most of them and the feature that I want to cover in this video is called custom CSS. I've already installed the plugin and before I can use it I have to connect it to my WordPress.com free account. If you don't have a free account at WordPress.com simply head over there click on get started now we don't need to sign up for a free wordpress.com blog we simply on the right here click sign up for just the username so click on that and sign up for your free username and then you can come back to your blog and click connect to wordpress.com uh, i'm already logged in so it's going to take me straight to the authorized jetpack page i'm going to authorize it so now basically it's communicating back and forth with my blog. From this point on, because I've connected them, I'm gonna be able to see my uh, blog stats, so I can see where traffic is coming from, the keyword phrases, the pages they're visiting, etc. It's not as in-depth as Google Analytics, but it's a great feature. Now, you know, I'm gonna get straight to it here because there's so many features in this plugin I could go on for ages. So now that we've activated this, under Appearance, you're going to find something called Edit CSS. And this is part of the Jetpack plugin. Basically, it's like a child theme or a child CSS style sheet. Now, what we're looking at here is just a test website I put together the other day. And what I want to do is perhaps I want to edit some of the CSS. Now when I say that, I mean the appearance, perhaps I want to change the color of my text, the size of the text, and, you know, appearance like that. Now, I'm currently using Google Chrome, and with Google Chrome, they have a feature called Inspect Element. So I can hover my mouse over any kind of element on the web page and right-click and click Inspect Element. Now, doing that brings up this kind of pop-up. Now, I personally like to undock it from the window and have it like this. Now, if you use Firefox, there is an extension called Firebug, which does pretty much the same thing. So what I did was I right clicked over this responsive design here. And I know this is a H2 tag. So let me just do that again. I'm going to right click and inspect element. And as you can see, it has highlighted the H2 headline. And this has actually got its own class called a boxed widget title. Now that's because at the bottom of this page we have four box widgets. Now the class is not so much important. What we need to look at is over here we have CSS rules. Now here we have a box which is, is a black color. Now if I click on this, I can change the color. So when I'm going to change the color, you'll notice that the headline changes color too. So what this is, it's like a, a live preview of editing your own theme code. So let's say, mm, well, yeah, I like that green color. Now what I can do is click here and it will open up the CSS code. Now this is what we call a closing bracket, I believe. And I'm going to copy this CSS code like that. I'm going to right click and copy and come back to my edit CSS. I'm going to control V and paste it in. And there you can see we have the color code for that green color. So I'm going to hit, well, we can hit preview and make sure it works. And it's going to give us a CSS preview. And now you can see we have the green color. Now that's great, just what I wanted. But perhaps I want to edit the size of the font. Now, maybe I wanted to make it bigger. Let's go 24px, and I believe that's pixel. And let's hit preview again. Uh, 24, well, it's a bit big, but um, my point is I'm showing you that you can easily edit the font size. And you can also, you know, inline it to the left, right, etc. And you can change the, I believe, the margin bottom is the space right here. So let's, you know, maybe there's too much white space there. So let's change that to five and preview it. 
there. So there's less space. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit save style sheet. And that's it, it's saved. So now when I refresh my home page, voila, it's like a site wide edit which is in effect. Now, if for any reason I wanted to go back to the original theme, well, I can just delete whatever CSS code I've added here. But maybe I want to add some additional uh, CSS code and edit. Now, as you can see, we have four images in these boxes and around each image, they have like some padding or spacing. So perhaps I don't like all of this white area. So I'm going to inspect elements and you can see it's highlighted the image source code. And over here we have the CSS rules and you can see the margins is uh, five pixels, 20 pixels and 20 pixels. Well, you know, how about we go two pixels? or five pixels, you can see as you make these edits, the it edits in front of your own eye. So let's say, yeah, I'm happy with that. We're going to click here, go over to the style sheet. And it's this one here. This and I should point that out too. It says in line left. So whenever we inline an image to the left, it's going to apply these margins. Now, if it was in line to the right, well, it would it would use these uh, margins. So just keep that in mind if you, you know, wanted to do something like that. So I'm going to copy it, come back over, Control V, and paste it in. And we're going to hit Save Style Sheet, and we'll refresh. And there, that's done. Now you can do all kinds of things with editing the CSS. Now, if I wanted to, I could alter the size of this slider image. Now, I've done it before, but I know if I try and do it in this video, I'm going to mess it up. So we'll just try and edit something else. Maybe let's edit the menu button. So I'm going to right click over my menu button and click inspect element. And I don't believe that worked. Let me close that again. Okay, right click inspect element there we are that's working now okay so here we have the menu button and over here for the css rules i can see that we have nav menu and then we have hover so this is more than likely controlling the uh, css from when you hover your mouse over it so let's say you wanted to edit the background color and we wanted it to go this color green when we hover the mouse over it. Yep, there we go. What else can we edit? We can edit the border color. Let's go this crazy pinky purple color. And here we have the border thickness, which is one pixel. Well, you can hardly see one pixel, so maybe we want to do something like Sorry, let me just edit that. Three pixels. So now it should go pink with a thick border. There we are. And you can also edit the size of a shadow because, well, it's a bit hard to see, but there is a shadow there. So let's change that to four pixels. Nope. You know what? Let's just ignore that forget what I added it there. Okay, let's jump over to the style sheet. And we're just going to delete the box shadow actually. And so this is controlling the when we hover it. But if we scroll up and look at this, you can see we also have the nav menu. And here is where we can edit the background color when we're not hovering the mouse over it. So you know, let's change this to a black color, which I believe is 000. zero, zero. And, you know, maybe we want to change the text color to a, a white color, which was FFF, like that. So now, like that. So what we would want to copy is from the closing bracket right there up to here. We're going to right click and copy. Come back to our CSS. Paste that in and hit save changes. And let's go take a look. 
And now we have a like a site-wide effect, and we've edited our menu. And remember, should we ever want to, you know, jump back to how it used to be, well, we can delete all the code, or we can go back to previous revisions. If you make some kind of mistake, or I know that in CSS they know what background means. So let's say this didn't say background; it was spelt wrong. Well, you're going to get like a warning message, unknown property. So, okay, well, yeah, that has to be background, that's why. Or let's say we forgot whatever that character thing is there is called, and we deleted it. Well, it's going to give us an error message. So, it generally, oops, it generally helps you out. Anyway, it's uh, just another feature of the plugin called Jetpack by WordPress.com. Highly recommend it. And, you know, if you play around with this kind of stuff, sooner or later you're going to get the hang of understanding how code works and things like that. And really, you're only going to benefit from trying to learn these features and techniques, etc. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to post them below. If you like the video, click like and subscribe. Have a great day.